episode one, the Echo Cast. Um, so what I wanted to start this off with was just kind of explaining what my whole goal here is, um, the whole purpose of doing this, uh, mostly to hear myself talk, and uh, also to uh, bring another podcast to the scene now, because more are going to pop up as we get closer to Division 2, right? Um, right now we have podcasts like Bombshell Jackets and Sit Rep. Those guys are amazing, both of them. Long running, high quality, entertaining. I'm understanding that I may not reach that, and that's fine. Um, I enjoy theirs so much. I enjoyed listening to all of the Division podcasts so much that I figured I would jump in and do my own thing, present my own angle on it, and go from there. So... Um, I have actually a organization here of things I'm going to talk about Um, every week. I kind of want to have a similar format with some changes here and there. So I always want to do a bit of an intro like I'm doing today. Obviously, this intro is about things like uh, what I want this podcast to be and what we want to cover and the kind of things we want to do. I'll always plan on doing it on Thursday um, so I can talk about the state of the game if there is one, uh, which we will do today. Talk about any game news um, that's coming up. Uh, more with the current game, more so than the future. Uh, any community news. So if anyone has any projects going on, if there's any new events or anything like that. Um, obviously, the, the Division 2 speculation, which we have a topic today, I will talk about for a minute. And uh, what, kind of what I think, uh, some stuff, how some stuff is going to work out. Um, gaming news in general, probably fairly briefly, um, but if there's anything really interesting that's going on, not just with the division or Ubisoft, but just in general, we'll talk about that. Um, and then just to kind of wrap up some final thoughts, um, as H3H3 would say, some goofs, some gaffes, and, uh, and that's it. So there's our first intro and that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing there. Okay. So the first day of the game recap, if you didn't get to see it today, you haven't watched any of the videos. Um, basically they talked about the 1.8.1 PTS ending tomorrow on the 23rd of March, uh, for us Americans, uh, figure out your time zones. I'll, uh, maybe I'll put up a chart one day. Um, they did announce something somewhat unexpected. They, uh, obviously we have ambush running, uh, starting earlier today, um, through the weekend as the final weekend celebration a global event um the little surprise that we got today in the glo- in the uh, state of the game is that they are going to run every single global event next week uh from the end of ambush until the following tuesday um they're going to do them each for 47 hours and that 48th hour will just be a break between the current one and the next one the order of those um are going to be outbreak to assault, to strike, and then to ambush. Uh, and then the final note there was to stop running Lexington. I believe Yannick uh, made that clear. So, uh, uh, and then the final thing they did on the stream today was uh, talking about the community stuff. Um, it's been a while since they've like had a full community stream and they still haven't, which is great. I know the news people are happy. They've made it really, really clear when people should tune out who are only there for news. Um, and yet people still complain, but you know, you can't please everybody. Um, one of the cool things today was that they asked everyone to send clips of their favorite streamers of the division, um, to the team, um, to at the, at division game, um, or any of the guys, I'm sure Hamish, Yannick, Petter, all those guys. Um, and that, then they went through with some various things. I know Taylor got a shout out. I kind of had to scoot through the end of it when I was rewatching it. Um, because of some work stuff, but um, stay of the game this week, you know, not super eventful, but still interesting. The ending of PTS, um, I would assume was on time. They didn't find any gigantic issues, and I would imagine we'll probably find out the 1.8.1 release uh, probably next week, hopefully, maybe. Um, <clears throat> the only game news stuff I really have is just kind of more of a recap. Um, I assume everyone knows by now, but if you don't, We're going to be getting the 1.8.1 patch uh, that's scheduled for next month in April. 
Um, obviously, like I just said, they haven't announced the date yet, but I imagine it's not too far away. That's going to include um, the updated loot drop system, which they talked about a while ago, and there were various opinions on. Um, I don't know if it's going to be changed at all or not. I didn't pick up that they were talking about any changes from their original announcement, but I'm sure the uh, eventual patch notes will clear that up. Uh, there'll be two new legendaries, Amherst and Grand Central Station. Um, I've heard that Amherst is relatively easy for people that are highly geared, um, but the addition of the hunters, the super tanky hunters and stuff, um, sounds like it makes that a bit more interesting as well as them surrounding you and spawning behind you. And then the final part of that will be the new global event. Um, <clears throat> 1.8.2 is scheduled for June. Um, they, I don't think they've announced whether or not there's going to be a PTS for that or not. I imagine there probably will be in May, but we'll have to wait and see. Um, that will also have uh, new legendaries. As far as I know, they haven't released what those are going to be or not be. Um, they hinted to one of them being very big. So if you had to ask me, I would um, be fairly certain that's probably going to be a general assembly. Um, at least that's what I hope. That's a mission I've wanted to see even a challenging version of since the game came out and since they started challenging missions. Um, but a legendary one would be pretty awesome as well. Um, and as far as I know, that would make Amherst and that one the only missions without a challenging but having a legendary. Can't remember if Grand Central Station does or not, but I'm sure everyone will make sure to tell me when I read the, the chat back. Um, that one will also have a new global event. And then the, the big feature with the June 1.8.2 is going to be the shield commendations or awards or whatever they're going to call them. I don't know if that's been specified. And I still don't believe that they've given us any real clue on how those are going to be attained or fit or, or, or completed. And especially what they're even going to give us. Um, the whole point of them is to give us gear for the division two. We don't, or not even gear. It could be, it could be aesthetic stuff. It could be cosmetics or skins or patches or face masks or something. I don't know. I suspect we'll find out um, closer to June when uh, 1.8.2 uh, is more likely. So the next thing I wanted to kind of chit chat about was community news. Um, I only had one topic with this uh, when the day started and now there's two uh, and I'll get to the second one uh, in a moment. But the first one I have is words with bond. Um, I put out uh, Olafur. Uh, he's a friend of the stream. He may even be here now. I'm not looking at chat. So uh, I'll wait till the end to do that. But um, he is a programmer for Ubisoft Massive, uh, or probably just Ubisoft. And he um, works on Uplay, the application. Um, he gave, I think he had my longest one yet. Um, gave some really interesting answers, some really fun stuff, including a really fun story about the release of The Division and how there was a bug that they found hours before the game came out. Um, and had to fix it before the game came out and people started playing it live. Um, so for more details on that, I highly suggest you check out Words with Vaughn. Um, once I'm done with the podcast here, I'll make sure wherever I post this, I'm gonna post it to YouTube and SoundCloud. Um, there will be links to my Medium page there. Um, if you wanna look for it yourself, it's Bond Diesel, um, and you just go to Medium and search for that. That is a blog website. So the other news I have is star players have been announced. Um, the first thing I want to say is that I'm incredibly, incredibly happy um, for all the people who are picked. Um, this is really, really cool. That's going to be such an exciting and fun experience for everyone who is able to do that. Um, I, I think it's, uh, I mean, you're going to be at E3, right? I mean, obviously getting to see the birth of the Division 2 or, or the announcement, whatever you want to call it, is going to be really exciting for us. But you're going to be there for all the pomp and circumstance and... Um, all of the excitement of E3 in general. Um, I mean, if, if you're a video gamer, that's, you know, that's a, that's a checklist marked off for some people. Um, so uh, of the people I'm aware of right now, we have Tony T, streamer, Agent Mab, cosplayer, Sage, streamer, Eidolon Fox, cosplayer, and uh, I don't know, I believe a common guest on Bombshell Jackets, Splinter Shield, 
cosplayer streamer all around awesome dude and uh pete 33 i believe is how you say his name um i believe he's a streamer um i think uh mav as well um and i don't know if i'm missing any other division people i know i saw some other people but they were like rainbow six and uh, people i weren't super familiar with so super happy for those people that's gonna be a really cool opportunity um i assume those invitations are done that they're um that's probably everybody but um we will see sorry about that the next thing um some speculation so uh, this will be the part where i get to chit chat for a little bit and uh, kind of enjoy my typical uh speculation that uh, i'm known for for better or worse um so the thing i wanted to cover today was kind of talking about obviously probably one of the most common topics i'm seeing right now about the division two um is where is it going to be and um, what are you going to do there so i've seen guesses ranging from we're going to stay in New York and they're going to open up more boroughs. Um, I've seen people guessing London, Paris, uh, Japan, Tokyo, um, Montreal, <laughs> you know, all over the place. Uh, I would say for me, I've kind of narrowed down my thoughts. And I did this a while ago. The um, Chicago, Boston, Philadelphia, or DC. Um, I've seen people also suggesting things like Atlanta seattle uh los los angeles uh funny enough um and all kinds of other cities um i think it'd be funny to suggest ones uh like 500 person towns in the middle of wisconsin but i'd say that's probably the least likely of all those um and when, I, when i've been thinking about it um the one that i think personally is the most likely is dc and i only say that because it seems like in my head that's the one that offers so much opportunity for really cool storytelling. I really think and I really hope that Division 2 um, has a big focus on storytelling and maybe letting you be a little more involved in the story instead of just being kind of an observer to all of it um, and kind of making you feel like you really are having a more direct impact on the um, kind of day-to-day -day story stuff. So um that's that's the thing i'm really excited about um when i've thought about no matter what city it's in but especially if it's dc i've kind of had this idea of you know how is it going to open up um or, or what, what's going to be our main purposes there like with the division one our main purpose starts off is literally just coming to new york and getting the city back together right um you know the commander's killed when the you know the not the helicopter the osprey gets blown up um, Fei Lao kind of becomes the uh, go-to commander of, of the Shade and the agents and stuff. Um, you know, obviously, as the game goes on, you learn your mission expands, right? Um, Keener becomes a thing, um, especially when you're um, at the police station and you kind of see um, that someone has gone rogue. And then, you know, obviously, you learn more about that story through the intel and the missions. Um, but the Division 2... I think our mission is going to be more clearly defined from the very start. Um, what I think it's going to be, um, I think that you're going to have something to do with the president. Um, if you remember some of the intel or some of the talk from when you played the game originally, it said um, he's no one knows where he is or that he's in hiding or something like that. I imagine there would be there'd still be fairly large parts of the government, not really functional, but still protected or hiding. Um, so I suspect there'll be something along the lines of finding the president, whether he's captured or hiding or whatever that is, um, to try to kind of start to restore order a bit. Um, I suspect that obviously we'll continue. Uh, I'm going to guess we're going to be there in the first place because, um, there's some intel that that's where Keener has gone. Um, especially if there is some government left that may even have some control left, um, who'd be a better target for Keener to go blackmail essentially, or to go uh, hold hostage with his 3d printer of death. And, uh, I, I, I suspect that that's going to be kind of a crossroads there. Um, and then obviously I would say probably to still just take back the city. I, I suspect we're going to be redoing that in another place, which is fine. I think that sounds awesome. But 
If I had to guess now, I feel like that storyline for the most part could work in most places, no matter what city they do it in. Um, as much as I would kind of love to see New York City again, I just I think maybe the fresh start that a lot of people have talked about is probably not a bad thing for the city as well. It'd be great if maybe one time one day we came back to the city, but um, you know we'll see. I'm uh, I'm curious to what we're gonna see with that. Um, but I do think DC would be a really cool setting. Um, and I do plan on making a video at some point um taking maps of all the cities i think it could be and kind of showing points of interest mapping out places where like oh, i'll be cool if they did like a dark zone here or it'd be cool if they did a mission in this place like dc you would have to have a white house mission right or like a congress mission where you go you know to all those incredibly cool buildings um some cool stuff like that i think it offers a lot of opportunity um, moving on to just kind of some general gaming news. Um, Sea of Thieves just came out. Um, to I don't want to call it mixed acclaim. Um, I don't know if I have the most varied set of uh, voices in my ear about that game. I personally haven't even played the beta, um, and I'm not really interested in it. Uh, its art style, kind of the game in general, isn't really my thing. Um, but from just kind of taking in a lot of voices on. YouTube, my own personal chats, Twitter, kind of checking it all out. Um, it seems like it is a very fun, but maybe somewhat shallow experience. Um, but it may be a thing that I just need to gut up and just go get the season pass or whatever for $10 that, that you can get the game pass and just try it out. Um, to me, my biggest concern with that game is it looks like some other games I really enjoyed that when you're playing with two or three of your buddies, people you actually know, or that you play games with a lot, it's a complete and other, you know, it's awesome. But if those guys are sleeping or busy or unable to play, um, you know, I'm only 29 turning 30 soon, but um, even a lot of my friends have stopped playing games. I don't really have a ton of my, uh, my real life friends to play with. I um, mean, even people, you know, on here that I've gotten to know, you know, everyone has different attention spans and that's the kind of game that it's really going to have to hold people's attention to keep those groups together to keep the game fun right so we'll have to see how that goes i'm really curious um we have far cry 5 coming up really really soon um i've seen some footage of that unfortunately i believe most of it or all of it i've seen probably all of it um is sponsored so you know you know you aren't really getting 100% honest perspective on the game. You're seeing what you're supposed to see and they're saying what they're supposed to say. Um, regardless, it does look like they've kind of tried to get away from some of the repetitive nature of Fallout 3 and, or Fallout Far Cry uh, 3 and 4, which kind of suffered from that a little bit. Um, they were both fun. Um, I never played 4, but I did play 3 and it was a blast. Um, but it was just kind of repetitive, even though with kind of the trippy story and stuff like that. So. Far Cry 5 does look like a lot of fun. Um, the setting looks really interesting, uh, if not a bit controversial, which I, I'm, uh, I'm sure is on purpose. And uh, it'll be interesting to see the media reaction to that game when it comes out. Because in some clips I saw today, there's some really current, very current uh, political talk and satire um, that uh, various uh, groups of people are going to be offended by. On both sides depending on what you know so that's gonna be an interesting game the reception of it I think is gonna be really cool and I hope that it uh, kind of lives up to really um, kind of resetting the whole Far Cry formula that everyone kind of makes fun of the whole you know clear a camp raise the flag clear the next camp raise the flag kind of thing um, it looks like there is some of that in there but hopefully the missions are a little more interesting than that and then the last thing I wanted to chat about real quick, um, Battlefield is a game I've played since the first one, um, not Battlefield 1, but back in 1942 and stuff like that. Um, and it's been a game I've always played when they've come out. I played Battlefield 1 a little bit on my PC and it just kind of lost my interest, but Battlefield 3 and 4 I loved. I was one of the few people who actually really liked Hardline, <laughs> so I'm almost embarrassed to admit that, but it is what it is. The, the the 2018, they haven't exactly named what it's going to be, but supposedly there is one coming out this year. I suspect E3 will be the reveal of it. Um, there's a lot of talk that it's going to be a World War II game. I think that provides a, a little bit more of an interesting setting than the Battlefield 1 with World War 1. 
there's nothing wrong with the World War One game. They've they've managed to throw in enough experimental guns and equipment that I think it kept it exciting for people. But you know, it's just it was so different than what people were used to. I just don't know. I, I don't think it's dead. I I feel like when I've seen player numbers, they're still respectable. But um, you know, it, it's it's peaked. You know, a while ago. Um, I believe they've released their final DLC as well. Um, and another thing to consider with Battlefield is that EA um, has been fairly transparent, I believe, about doing a Battle Royale game and getting in that mix. And I would not be surprised if we see like a Fortnite situation with Battlefield this year where like the multiplayer and the single player part of the game is paid. You pay for it 60 bucks or whatever their fee is going to be. Hopefully they've learned from all the loot box stuff. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if there's a third little feature to that game that's Battle Royale supported by microtransactions and it's free to play. I could be wrong, maybe EA isn't quite ready for that yet, um, but I think it'd be really interesting. So, okay, so I'm going to go into my wrap up. I have three quick little items. Um, the first one being um, for this podcast, I would like to eventually bring in guests. Um, to either go through the whole thing with me or maybe have a specific segment almost like an audio or almost like a live words with bond i think that'd be pretty fun and pretty cool to do um obviously uh you know covering similar topics every week skipping things when there isn't anything to talk about my speculation and stuff like that i'm always gonna be able to talk about i'll figure out something to uh chit chat about whether it's skills weapons talents skill trees all that crazy stuff um i have a skill tree video coming out soon that i've spent a lot of time on already i'm trying to kind of step that game up i'm really excited to show it to everyone and uh we'll see there's still a lot of work to do including editing and voice recording so script's done though so i'm excited to get that recorded um one thing anyone who's listening right now or who listens in the future either on youtube or soundcloud um, i'm I'm actually gonna post the vod to twitch as well um feel free to send questions Uh, if you want to whisper me uh tweet me on twitter or um dm me on twitter um i'm open to suggestions of topics uh, (laughs) of topics uh especially with the speculation the division 2 speculation um or community news i'm happy to talk about any of that stuff if there's something going on maybe i'm not aware of i'm happy to chit chat about it can i give my opinion or outlook on it um so definitely feel free um it doesn't even have to be division related necessarily obviously that's what i prefer um but if it's a general gaming question if it's a question about bay diesel i don't know you guys could probably come up with some weird stuff so i'll be very picky with what uh comes through but we will uh we'll have to see so but feel free to suggest stuff i'm happy to uh hear it out and that just includes just the podcast in general this is a new thing to me i'm trying to figure it out it's something i'm trying to do and uh we'll go from there So the final topic I want to cover uh, before I open up chat and see what all you crazy people have said is I'm just kind of addressing, I've had some people messaging me and stuff today. Um, I've made uh, a tweet about it. Um, At least so far, I haven't been invited as a star player. Um, I was really hoping to be, Um, that would have been super cool. Um, I know that there's, there might still be invitations going out. I'm not going to count my, uh, my eggs or my, my, my chickens before they're hatched. Um, It'd be really cool, but if I don't get it, it's okay. Um, I'm still gonna cover everything. I'm still gonna do what I'm doing. I'm literally starting this up today. This is a new thing I want to do as part of my Thursday streams, and um, I really appreciate the support and the kind words, both on Twitter and in my DMs. And um, people have been really supportive and really cool. Um, I don't take it as an insult. I don't take it as anything. I've only been around for a few months. I understand. It doesn't take away from my desire to want to do those things. Um, but you know, if it's not my time yet, it's not my time and I'll keep grinding away. Um, I don't, you know, I didn't start this up and do it just hoping for an E3 invite, uh, as cool as that would be. Um, I did it cause I enjoy it. I enjoy talking to people. I enjoy hearing myself talk and I enjoy getting to you know, meet new people and do all those things. So, um, it's okay. I'm good. Still kind of hoping a little bit. But if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. So that's kind of the last thing I have for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I will leave various links and stuff like that in the the places where you can find them. Uh, And this was the first episode of the EchoCast. So I hope you enjoy. And I will see you around for the next one. 
Let's Thanks see. for the follow. Wait a second. <laughs> that appears to be a official Ubisoft account. Kept me waiting, huh? <laughs> Thanks for the follow. Oh, hey. Hmm. It's not every day you get to, uh, to tag Ubisoft in your uh in your own chat. I I feel like that was Hmm. Okay, well. I feel bad now for my tweet. Um, I am being invited to Los Angeles to be a star player. That's super awesome. <laughs> Thanks for you the jerks. Follow. You're all jerks. It was such a long wait. <laughs> Throw out the podcast. Throw it out. That's <laughs> no, okay. I can amend it at the end. Oh, man. <laughs>